guys, it's me, Hannah. You miss me? I know I do. I know it's been it's been a whole week since I since I did a video on video in January. But anyway. I'm here to read you more of Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew, Case of the Sneaky Snowman. So previously, in the sixth chapter, Nancy, Bess, and George were out, were out looking for the culprit who knocked down Sherlock, their snowman. And when they realized it was Bradley and Nedley, Nancy's friend just sent him a message that Bradley might have been the one who pulled all the pranks, but do you think he's the snowman? But do you think? But they could be right. Let's find out and see what happens next. Chapter 7, Chill on the Hill. That's the name we found at the scenes of the crimes, George exclaimed. Bradley's got to be guilty. Go ahead, Nancy, Beth said. She pointed to the keyboard. Send Bradley an instant message. Nancy thanked Ned and signed off. And signed off. I think I'd rather put question. Bradley, face to face first, she said. If we can find him again, we can look for Bradley in the park, George, George said. Nancy thought about Bradley's fancy moves on his snowboard. Or we can look for him somewhere else, she said. <laughs> Where? Beth said. Beth and George asked together. Nightmare Hill, Nancy said with a grin. Whoa, George cried. That's the steepest hill in River Heights. You have to be super brave to go down Nightmare Hill, Beth said. Or super crazy. Nancy thought of Bradley and said, exactly. Nightmare Hill was five blocks away. The girls had permi the girls had permission to walk there together as they stood on the top hill. They saw a few extreme sh shadows, a few extreme sweaters and snowboarders, but not Bradley. I guess even Bradley's not crazy enough to go down Nightmare Hill. Nancy sighed. They were about to walk away when someone yelled, King of the Hill! I'm King of the Hill! Woohoo! Nancy whipped around, zipping down the hill on his snowboard was badly snoozing. He was wearing black ski goggles, a blue parka, and matching pants. Suddenly, Nancy noticed something else. Look at Bradley's gloves, Nancy said. They're green. They're green. The same color as those woolly threads we found. I told you he was guilty, George said. Not yet, Nancy. George said. Not yet, Nancy said. There's one more thing I want to find out. Bradley began climbing back up the hill. Bradley Norson? Nancy called. I can't believe it. Can I have your autograph? Can I? Can I? Huh? George said. Nancy? Yuck! Bess whispered. Bradley looked surprised too. My what? He asked. Your autograph.
Nancy said. "You're going to be a famous Olympic snowboarder someday." So I, so I want to be the first fan to get your autograph. I think I'm going to barf. George muttered. Bradley grinned. He reached into his pocket and pulled out with an empty candy bar wrapper, and then he pulled out a pen. Nancy watched as Bradley scribbled his name on the wrapper. Here, Bradley said. He held out the wrapper. But next time. I charge five bucks. Nancy snatched the wrapper. She looked at the autograph and shouted, "Just as I thought!" Green ink. Bess jabbed. She Bess jabbed the autograph, and look, she said, "Your the letter S is curly." The same name as the messages. What are you girlies talking about? Bradley cried. You're the one who did all those mean pranks in the park. Nancy said. You're the snowman. No, Bradley. Bradley be- narrowed his eyes at the girls. Then he slipped his feet into his snowboard and said, "Oh yeah, catch me if you can." The girls watched as Bradley pushed down the hill. The girls watched as Bradley pushed down the hill. Oh, great! George said, "He's getting away." Nancy, you, you best glanced around, ran over to a big chair of cardboard and dragged it over. What's that? Nancy asked. An instant sled, Beth said. Hop on. But this is Nightmare Hill! George cried. They sat in a row on the cardboard. Then they leaned forward and pushed down the hill and pushed it down the hill. Whoa! The girls shouted. Nancy gritted her teeth as they sped after Bradley. It was like being on the bumpiest roller. It was like being on the bumpiest roller coaster. It was like being on the bumpiest, scariest roller coaster ride. King of the hill! Bradley shouted as he gained speed. King of the ah! Bradley snowboard flipped over. He flew through the air and went right. And it landed right in. In a snowbank, the cardboard sled stopped at the bottom of the hill. The girls jumped off and ran to Brad, and ran to Bradley. He stand up. He was standing up, covered in snow, covered with snow. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. <clears throat> anyway, now you're the king of the spill. Covered with snow. Now you're king of the spill. Why did you do it, Bradley? Nancy asked. Why did you? Oh, why did you do? Why did you do? Why did you do all these? All those pranks. Sorry. I I don't know what you're talking about. Bradley growled. Bradley dusted dust himself off. Suddenly. Nancy spied something stuck to his sleeve. He looked like a. It looked like a strand of silly. It looked like a strand of green silly string. Hmm. I think you do know what I'm talking about. Nancy said. She plucked the string from the sleeve and smiled. Nancy stared at the string and said,、uh, "Bradley stared at the string and sighed." <sighs> Sorry. Okay, so I squared a bunch of sleds, he said, and papered some bushes, and threw some eggs.、Hmm. Big deal. 
You forgot something, George said. You knocked out our snowman too. No way, Bradley said. I did that. I didn't do. You didn't? Nancy asked. Nah, Bradley said. I stopped knocking snowman down. I stopped knocking snowman. I stopped knocking down snowman in second grade. Hmm. Bradley picked up his board, and then stomped his way up the hill. How do we know? He's telling the truth. Beth asked. George pointed to one of Bradley's footprints. George pointed to one of Bradley's footprint. George pointed to one of Bradley's footprints. His boots, his boots, have that starry design on the sole. George said. Hmm. Just like the footprints near the pranks. But not la. But not like the ones near Sherlock. Beth said. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think Bradley knocked down Sherlock. Nancy said, and he won't make any more trouble. And he won't make any more trouble either. Now, uh, now that we know who the snowman is, but we still don't know what happened to Sherlock. George said. Nancy, Bess, and George chatted as they walked away from the hill. The friends still couldn't believe they had slid down the highest hill in River Heights. And I built a sled," Beth said proudly. "Well, sort of." The girls headed back to Drew to the Drew house. Nancy's puppy, Chocolate Chip, was tethered to a tree in the front yard. The chain fastened to Chip's collar was long enough for her to romp around in the snow. Chip buried her little brown face in the snow. When she pulled it out, it was completely it was completely white. Chip loves the snow, Nancy said. I can see that. George laughed. Inside the house, the girl was sat around the kitchen table, drinking Hannah's yummy hot chocolate. They forgot all about the case as they giggled. They let chocolate mustache and let chocolate mustaches from their lips. As they sipped their last drops, Hannah held out Chip's leash. Now that you have, now that you've had some hot chocolate, Hannah said. How about walking chocolate Chip? Nancy, Bess, and George bundled up again and went outside. Chip's chain was still attached to the tree, but Chip was gone. Nancy's heart beat faster and faster. But Bess, George, she stammered, "Somebody took my dog!" Who do you think who took? Nancy's dog, Chocolate Chip. Do you think? Do you know who the culprit is? Let's find out tomorrow and see. Now we will know what what really happened to Sherlock. So this is me, Hair Pain, and I'll read you more in the eighth chapter, and I'll see you next time.